This is Andy Olson with Glow Lighting, and it's another episode of Lightcraft, and today we're talking about Luminaire 4, how to control your lighting via your wireless DMX network. Let's jump right into the app. We're going to add a new fixture, and up comes the screen, and we're asked for what kind of control we want. We select a profile, we say Fixture Cloud, and then we type in KinoFlow. In Luminaire 4, when you do search for your fixture in the database, you've got to be syntax specific and not misspell anything or put in extra spaces of any kind. We're adding two KinoFlow Celeb 450s that are right behind me in profile 25. Then we scroll down to find the profile 25 Celeb 450. Go ahead and confirm to open that and it's connected to DMX20. And we're going to say next. And we'd like to add two. Okay, at this point, Luminaire populates the top right of the screen with the parameters of this light, this 450, Celeb 450. And so you can see now this first light here, there's its intensity, here's its color temperature, its tint, its crossfade, its color temperature in the color crossfade and then the actual color. And then here's the beginning of the second light where you can see intensity, but then just above it is the little white pillbox here. And that's saying that at this point, at this bracket, this light starts. And these are its faders for the second light. So if we bring our intensity up, then we can adjust the color temperature. And then you'll notice here this little white pill here, we open that up, that selects the range. So we want the entire range of the light. Or we can tap on some pill boxes here that specify what we want the color temperature to be at. And we can exit out of there. And then the tinting is the pink and the green. These are just simple faders that are affecting your parameters. Intensity, color temperature, color. But it gets a little tricky in how Luminaire does it. Let's take a look. So, once intensity comes up, you can crossfade your color in terms of CCT. But now you can color, also color crossfade over to whatever color is specified here. I usually have to bring down my color temperature first in order to engage the color crossfade. And then as this fader comes up... So the light crossfaded over to red. And as I brought up my color fader, there are two dots at the top of that fader. So the left one is when the fader's down, and the right dot is for when the fader's up. So now you can see that if I turn that other dot on and fade it up, and now if I specify blue on that left dot, and I close out this window, you'll notice now as I crossfade, my light turns blue. It's color, it's color crossfaded over into color, and now it's using a fader to crossfade into two different colors. But now if I color crossfade down, then I'm losing that color and I'm defaulting back to my CCT. So you'll see now if I color crossfade down, I now am crossfading back to CCT mode. So it's important to know that any of these parameters, intensity, color temperature, tint, color crossfade, color, uh, any of these parameters can be manipulated also just by tapping below the, the uh, fader. Let me show you. Here on intensity, if I just double tap, you'll notice that on the right hand side a window pane pops out. I can now take this and I can label it and I can just call it whatever I want. I'm going to call it on and now I can also go in and say on is yellow and now I can also say my CCT, if I want to manipulate that, I want to make sure that maybe it's easier to see if it's blue. And tint can be the same way. I can tap on tint and then change that into, I like to do a green if I can. The labeling each one of your faders or your parameters is important just to easily find out what you're trying to do. That way all your intensities are yellow, your tints are green, and maybe your CCT is blue.
So in Luminaire, you'll notice that below the faders is another little area, and this is where we add scenes. So let's just click on a yellow scene, and then in this scene, we'll bring up a certain number of parameters, and then that is automatically recording. You can see the white line above it. That means that scene is active, and you can see a refresh. And now at this point, we can tap on that, and we can call it some other scene. We'll call it yellow. And now what we can do is, from that, if we tap again on plus scene, we are just adding a scene. What that's doing is it's cloning the first look. So whatever was here is now in this. But we can just manipulate those things however we want. And then we can, that will automatically record into this other, this other scene. So there are some other viewing options in Luminaire that are kind of important. Uh, you're going to find your own preferences. So this little tab here, what it does is it sends you into full screen mode. And there are a couple other, way, other ways to look at this too. There are some arrows here in the bottom right where you can expand your view just so you're looking at your scenes. And then you can collapse that back down. You can also just look at your lights. So there is a split view here. It's important to know how that works. And then also this tab up here, this pane on the far left, is basically a way to look at all your fixtures. So if you're looking at just one fixture, then that's, those are all the parameters that you're looking at. So in Luminaire, normally we're looking at scenes at the bottom and selecting our scenes, and then just auto-saving those scenes as we manipulate the faders or the parameters for each light. Really simple way to work. But you might have a show that requires sequences where you can just use a go button to go from look to look to look or scene to scene to scene. So let's look at sequences. So right now we're in all controls, but if we come up here to sequences, and then hit the plus sign and call that sequence one, that's fine. And then over here on the right hand side, what we're going to do is we're going to add our scenes to the sequence. We say add. And now you'll notice that we have a sequence and now we have the different scenes added to it. Now what we can do is play the sequence. And it's starting to play, but then you can also manipulate how it plays. Does it play one scene and stop? Does it go all the way to the end of the scenes? Does it loop back around? So we have it in loop mode here. But then also you can do timing, where you can enable a timer, and then you can say sound active. And Luminaire wants to know if it can have access to the microphone, and so we allow. And now, according to your audio, you can see that even as I talk, it's jumping to the next scene. So at this point, Luminaire has pivoted more into a DJ tool. But if there's an appeal to you, or you don't want to use sequences like this, you can always turn off the microphone, and then not work in this mode, and work in the All Fixtures screen, and just work off your scenes at the bottom. There are a few other things in Luminaire 4 that I really like, and I'd like to show you. And one of them is going to be this FX button. It's a handy little button if you need to do some simple effect, like an oscillator effect. And now what's happening is my intensity is oscillating up and down. And you can set a bunch of different parameters, how much it actually oscillates, how it oscillates. You can also call up a fade in or a chase. You can very easily turn off this effects as well. So pretty handy just in terms of knowing your effects button is here. There's also the intensity that you can manipulate or whatever parameter you want to manipulate. You can type in your, your value. If you want to go to mid, we go to 50%. Go to full, obviously 100. Low would be off. I don't know why they don't just call that off. Or you can type in whatever value you want. So that pretty much sums up Luminaire 4. You're adding fixtures, 
you're manipulating the parameters and you're creating scenes and you're toggling through the scenes and then perhaps you're looking at sequences depending on your use case. But it's a great little program to wirelessly control your, your lights. Uh, I use it for simpler setups. Uh, however, Blackout Next offers a huge step up in terms of control of lighting. So you should also look at Blackout Next to see if maybe Blackout Next is the program that you need to control your lights.